keep watching to see the top five animals that die after mating. Number five, Pacific salmon. All seven species of salmon die after enduring their long, arduous journey upriver to spawn. It's not surprising, considering they often have to swim thousands of kilometers to get to their spawning ground. This is because there's little food for them to eat, and they exhaust their energy hurling themselves against a river's current. Those that can spawn are left to deal with skin that's practically falling off and organ failure until they eventually die. Though it sounds sad, the decaying salmon's bodies fertilize the stream, contributing to the entire ecosystem's health. And since they always return to breed and die at the same stream at which they were born, they are a perfect example of the circle of life. Number four, Antichinus. Once a year, these shrew-like marsupials from Australia will engage in a breeding spree that sees the males trying to impregnate as many females as possible. This is because the male Antichinus has a short window of time to mate before its body stops making sperm. Yeah, that's always the excuse. After frantic mating marathons that can last up to 14 hours, the male's sperm eventually runs out, and that's when things begin to fall apart, literally. They quickly suffer an immune system breakdown where their blood is flooded with stress hormones and testosterone. They lose their fur, and the poor Antichinus begins bleeding internally. A male's life ends with it becoming blind and its body rotting from the inside out. To make matters worse, this natural process may have a negative impact on an already dwindling Antichinus' population being affected by climate change. Number three, cicadas. When a cicada is born, typically on the branch of a tree or shrub, it falls and immediately burrows into the ground. There, it'll live off the nutrients of tree roots, spending almost all of its life underground. Anywhere from two to 17 years later, they emerge fully grown along with thousands of their brethren. Over the span of five weeks, the cicadas breed. And can you guess what happens next? Yep, that's right, they die. But not before bombarding the area with their buzzing, high-pitched, and sometimes deafening mating call. Number two, octopus. Octopuses are magnificent creatures for many reasons. Not only can they change colors and regrow tentacles, but the female octopus only lays one clutch of eggs in her lifetime. After laying her eggs, the octopus stops eating and her body slowly wastes away. Some will hasten their demise by ripping themselves apart. I know childbirth is hard, but this is next level. The males don't have it easy either. They stop feeding after the breeding season and die within months either at the hands or <clears throat> tentacles of a hungry female or being picked off by a predator. And number one, praying mantis. Graceful and still, the praying mantis may appear harmless and delicate, but it's at the top of this list for a reason. Known as sexual cannibalism, the female mantis will kill her partner after and sometimes during the act of mating. But it doesn't always end there for the ill-fated suitor. Some male mantises, typically of the bordered mantis variety, can continue mating after being attacked by the female. Except now they might be doing the deed minus their head. Yikes. Dating can be tough, but it's nothing compared to the sex lives of praying mantises. Though brutal sexual cannibalism does have evolutionary benefits. Female mantises that eat their mates are stronger than their competitors, which means their eggs will be healthier and their young stronger too. Gives a new meaning to survival of the fittest. When they're not fighting each other, they're taking down birds, frogs, and even snakes. Don't believe me? Well, you can see for yourself in our episode about praying mantises. Going to extremes in the name of procreation and dying because of it is what these animals do. And that's what makes them crazy creatures. <laughs>